Okay, how about now? You guys hear me now okay? Okay, so I'm sorry about that. I uh, forgot to switch the input in OBS. So, all right, so let me go back and uh, uh, <laughs> talk through this since you guys actually couldn't hear me for all of it. So, all right, so we, um, the last time we looked at particularly at the differential equation dy dt was 2y. Uh, and the 2 I just picked basically at random because I needed a number uh, in order to graph this thing in Mathematica. We know that the solution of the differential equation um, looks like this um, because we've done that before. And we graphed two specific uh, examples of that where y0 was 1 and y0 was 0.1. Um, okay, and we did that and plotted it over the vector field. So what I wanted to do was just remind ourselves what a vector field was. So we take the differential equation and we take the uh, coordinate plane and we're basically going to do kind of like a glorified paint by numbers. Um, we're going to take every point in the plane and at each point we're going to plug it into the differential equation. So I picked just some random point here, t naught comma y naught, and uh, then I'm going to plug that into the right hand side of my differential equation and draw an arrow that has that slope. Okay, so um, in this case, the right-hand side of the equation um, doesn't involve t, so the t part of it I just basically ignore. And uh, so the slope that I want my arrows to have is 2 y naught. And the easiest way to draw an arrow that has that slope is just to make the run one unit, and then the rise would be exactly equal to the slope. Um, that's sort of a, a quick and dirty uh, way to do it, but it works. Um, okay, so we get that, and the t-coordinate, as we saw, said, isn't relevant in this particular differential equation, although in some of them it is. Um, Okay, so let's uh, let me switch over to Mathematica for a second, and uh, let's let's reproduce the graphs that we had last time. So the uh, the first thing that I'm going to draw is my uh, vector plot, and what I have to put here is. I need to put uh, three things. The first thing in curly braces is the coordinates or the two components of my arrow. And the first component is just a one because that's the run of each arrow. And then the second component is the, the rise of each arrow. And it was two Y just because that's the example I picked. Okay. Uh, and then the other two things here, basically, I just need to say uh, what range of t and y am I interested in graphing over, and I just picked 0 to 10 here for sake of example. Okay, so um, what we can do is let's pick the specific value of y equals 1, then any place where y equals 1, which would be along here where there's so the arrows are sort of purple, then my slope, my arrow would be uh, one for its uh, first coordinate and two for its second coordinate, two times one. And so I would draw arrows that have slope two. And if we look here at these purple guys uh, where y equals one, slope two looks pretty pretty much correct. So good. Um, and so what what this vector plot function in Mathematica is doing is basically just taking uh, doing the paint by numbers uh, for a bunch of representative points in the plane, it's going to compute the arrows that go at each point, and then it graphs them. And uh, it's using the colors here 
to represent basically the length of them. So um, the ones at the top are steeper and they would actually be longer, um, but it's not drawing them super long because otherwise it really wouldn't be very visible or, or understandable. Um, okay, so the other command that we could use uh, has basically the same stuff, but just a different name, oops, uh, stream plot. And I like that because it makes it pretty obvious what the solution curves are going to kind of look like. Okay. Um, and so we can definitely see uh, sort of the shape of the solutions uh, or the paths that they take. And we also said, um, so what I'm going to do is like we had before, So we had um, two specific examples of initial um, two specific examples of initial uh, values one and point one, and this would be the graphs of them um, individually. And what I'm going to do is. Make this one red, make that one green. I'm going to hide each individual plot by putting a semicolon, and then I'm going to show all three of them together. And so what we get there is um, our solution curves. The red one is the starting value of 1, and the green one is the starting value of 0.1. Okay, um, so in this case, we knew the solution to the differential equation. Um, it was um, it was uh, uh, something that we'd looked at before, um, and so what uh, what we're going to kind of look at for a moment is uh, what happens if we do not actually know what the solution to the differential equation is. Um, so how could we solve it? Um, and maybe better put, how could we sort of almost solve it? Okay, and what I mean by that is uh, differential equations is a huge field within mathematics, and there are lots and lots of different kinds of differential equations, and solving them uh, exactly can be rather difficult or sometimes impossible. Um, and so what we want to do is say, OK, could I at least numerically solve one of these things? So could I do some number crunching to kind of approximate a solution to one of these equations that uh, is maybe not perfect, but is good enough to get, get work done? OK, and so that. For that, uh, we're going to turn to a method called Euler's method. Um, so let me switch back over to the iPad. Oops. All right. So and uh, this name is pronounced Euler. And if any of you ever say it any other way, then um, the the stick from the classroom awaits you when you return to campus in August. Um, okay, so Euler's method is a numerical technique to solve differential equations, or at least sort of approximately solve them. Um, it's not a perfect uh, method. Uh, it does it is somewhat error prone, um, but it can at least give us a rough idea as to what a solution might look like. Um, okay. So the way that this works is basically to take advantage of our paint by number scheme. Um, so what we're going to do is start at some point t 
naught, y naught. We also need to choose a step size, um, which I'll call h. Now, the the step size h, the smaller you make it, the more accurate your uh, solutions are going to be, but the more work you have to do. The bigger you make h, the more crude your approximations are going to be, but the less work you have to do. So there's a trade-off there, uh, sort of constantly between uh, how much work do you want to do versus how accurate do you want to have your, your answers. Okay, so um, the basic picture would be something like this. I'm going to start at a point t naught y naught. And at that point, I know that I have an arrow of some sort, okay? And that the arrow has slope y prime, okay? So then what I'm going to do is follow the arrow by going h units to the right and then rising however much y prime tells me to go. So what I would do is I would say, okay, the new point is going to be, I'll call this new point um, T1, Y1. And how am I going to get the two coordinates of it? Well, T1 will just be the previous Y coordinate plus H. And Y1 will be the previous y coordinate plus um, the slope times uh, the run. Okay, so the idea there is if the arrow has slope 2 and I make my step size 1, then I would go 2 units up, 1 unit over, and I would add that to uh, my y value and get an updated thing. Okay, now this is a little abstract, so let's do this specific to uh, the differential equation that we were using uh, in our example. Okay, so I'm going to have to go over to the next uh, page here. Um, all right, so let's choose t naught equal to 0 y naught equal to 1, and y prime was 2y like before. Let's also choose, for the moment, let's choose h equal to 1, uh, just for sake of demonstration. Okay, so our initial point is 0, 1. Okay, uh, so this is um, the first point. The second point is going to be um, T1, Y1 would be, well, the first point we said was 0 plus 1. Okay, so that's the previous T coordinate plus H. And then the new Y coordinate is the previous Y coordinate plus 2 times um, oops, 2y, which is, so that gives us this part. And then I have to multiply by my step size uh, there. Okay, so... Um, Uh, and then I need to close the parentheses. Okay, so that's the setup for it. And then what does that gives us? It gives us one comma, uh, looks like three would be the next point. And then what we're going to do is just repeat this procedure over and over and over. Okay, so let's get this, the next point, T2, Y2, would be... Uh, T1 plus H comma Y1 plus H times 
to y1. And so the next t coordinate would be 2. And the next y coordinate would be 3 plus 1 times 2 times 3, which would be uh, 9. And then, like I said, we're going to repeat this procedure over and over and over again. Uh, and it's basically just how much work do you want to do. Okay, so let me sort of pause for just a moment and uh, see, do you guys have any questions over the procedure? Uh, before we go back to Mathematica and sort of graph this thing. Question, preguntas, fragen. So either uh, talk in Discord or type it in the stream chat. Oh, okay. Sorry, I just uh, <laughs> I just saw all your messages. Um, so yeah. Um, okay. So let's um, let's sort of graph what we've got in Mathematica and uh, see what this kind of looks like. All right, so let me switch over to Mathematica. And um, what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to make I'm going to make a list of the points that we got. So we started with 0, 1. Our next point was 1, 3. And our point after that was 2, 9. OK. So and then I'm just going to name this, this list of points, data, just whatever. And then. I'm going to make a list line plot of the data, and that gives me this sort of um, stick shape. And basically, my three points, I had the point uh, here at 0, 1. I had the next point here at 1, 3. And then the point over there at 2, 9. And then I'm just going to connect all of those with a straight line. Uh, and then I'm also going to um, um, oh that looks hideous okay I'll just do red for that one um, okay and then what I want to do is I'm going to call this object p4 and I'm going to remove P3 from the graph, and I'm going to put uh, this here. Uh, so let me put the um, let me put this one in green. Okay. So the green curve here and the red curve are our two solution curves. The green curve is the exact solution that we knew uh, from before, just e to the two t. Um, and the red curve is our approximate solution by means of the um, by means of Euler's method. Now, you can clearly tell that those two things are not the same. Okay, the red curve roughly follows the um, green curve, so they look similar, and Roughly speaking, the red curve is um, uh, follows the arrows uh, of our stream plot. It's just not perfect, okay? And one of the reasons it's not perfect is because our step size, our h, I chose a really big value. I chose one, okay? And that in practice is too big to actually do anything useful um, but uh, but it does get it get us at least a reasonable um, 
reasonably close shape to the green curve. Um, and the, the red curve stops here at this point up at uh, 2 comma 9 uh, only because I didn't compute any other uh, values. Okay, but at least the shape is roughly speaking following um, the the shape in question. Okay, so any questions with that? Hopefully that kind of makes sense. Now we'll recompute this in a moment with the smaller step size um, to kind of see what shrinking h uh, will do for you. All right, so any questions on sort of this procedure? Um, and later I'm going to show you guys a way to um, automate the, uh, the finding of all of these points, um, basically for number crunching perspective, um, so that we don't have to do this manually every single time. Okay, so let's, uh, let's recompute this. Uh, we had our data, our three points that we got out of Euler's method, um, and we did that with a step size of one. Okay, so let's recompute this using a smaller step size, and um, then um, uh, we can kind of see how we would start to automate this. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do. is I'm going to define a function uh, f of ty equals 2y. And in this case, um, the function doesn't depend on y at all, or sorry, it doesn't depend on t at all, uh, but I'm still going to think about it that it might, and so hence why I'm going to put f of ty. Um, and so that's... Um, uh, that's the differential equation. And then we had h equal to 1 was our step size. OK. Then um, what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to, let's actually make h equal to 0.1. OK. And what I want to do is I want to reset my data uh, thing. Oops. Equal to the initial um, the initial point that we chose, okay. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to progressively add points to this list, and then we'll graph them. Okay. Now, in order to do that, um, I'm going to open up. Let's see if it actually loads correctly on the stream. It does not. Okay, so I'm going to switch over to, oops, sorry, the entire screen. Okay, so I want to have the entire screen here uh, so that we can look at the documentation. And there's two things that I need to use out of the documentation. Okay, um, the first is append to. So I have a list of things, okay, and that list of things I've called data. So like let's say that we have a list of numbers, 1, 2, 4, and 9. If I append an object to it, then that just tacks on a new object uh, to my list. And so this method, what I want to do, is I want to continually append the new points in a list along with the old point. Okay, so that's the first um, piece from the documentation we need. And the next, uh, so the syntax was, what are you appending to? And then the second thing you list is what new thing you're appending. Um, now, the new thing that we're appending is another point. And how did we get that point? Well, what was the formula 
for getting the new T coordinate. It was the previous T coordinate. Um, so let me actually uh, hide this for just a second. Uh, it was the previous T coordinate plus the step size. Okay, now here's where it gets fun. Let me do this. So if I do data, double brackets of one, what that does is it plucks out the um, first entry in the list data. Now right now there's only one object in the list data and so it just spits out that first point. Okay, now this object has two coordinates. It has a first coordinate and it has a second coordinate. If I want to get out the first coordinate, I do another double brackets of one. Uh, and if I want to get out the second coordinate, then I use that, okay? So this is kind of hairy looking, uh, all these brackets going on, but basically all I'm doing is saying, okay, I want a particular item out of my list and I want a particular coordinate out of that item. And this kind of idea is how we're going to get at uh, the previous values. Okay, so the new Y coordinate is the old y coordinate plus h. What is the new y coordinate, or sorry, the old y coordinate, at, sorry, the old t coordinate, the old t coordinate is this. And then we're going to add to that our value of h. Okay, now, what is our new y coordinate? It's going to be the old y coordinate that's the old y coordinate plus h times the value of our differential equation at the old coordinate okay so that would be f of um, what's the t coordinate that goes there data of 1 of 1 and what's the y coordinate that goes there? The old y coordinate, which was data of one of two. Okay, so that is a mouthful, right? But let's uh, let's look at what we've got. Um, we need to plug two points in, or two numbers into the function, the t coordinate and the y coordinate, and they're going to be the previous one. Uh, so what is the previous t coordinate? It's this. What is the previous y coordinate? It's data of one of two, and then that plugs into our formula. Okay, let me actually take, um, let me put my h back to one, and if we've done this correctly, we should basically get exactly the graph that we had a minute ago. Okay, um, so I'm gonna do that, and then our new point that got added on, so let me delete these two lines. Now, our data object has 0, 1 in it, that was our initial point, and 1, 3, that was our new uh, point, and um, that matches what we had here. We had uh, 0, 1, then 1, 3, and if we did this one more time, we'd get 2, 9. So, what I can do here is I can just copy and paste and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to change all the initial first things from 1 to 2 and now data will have all three points this first command produces this it tacked on one new point and then the second command uh, tacked on another one and we get 2 comma 9 okay uh oh uh, we're being raided by um, Dr. Dunaway so okay um, so we get 
in this case then exactly the list of points that we had a minute ago, these three guys here. And if I change my step size to something like that, then this happens to be uh, the values that we get, okay, whatever. Notice, however, that we only go over to point two uh, in T, and that's because um, we shrunk our step size. All right, but what I can do is, so let me copy. Okay, sorry, my mic just decided to randomly turn off for a second. Not sure why that happened. Um, okay, so um, go back here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, um, I'm going to delete this because we were recomputing it. And then I'm going to move these three commands down here. And uh, then what we're going to see is we have um, our um, the three values that we've computed are these three values here with our 0.1 step size. Okay, and now look at our stick plot um, and um, we have, we only have three points on there, but they, they line up almost precisely with the green plot. Okay, so at this point, I want to have you guys do a little bit of an exercise here, which is for this step size, I want you guys to manually compute the next two points. Okay, so your next uh, T coordinates would be point three and point four. Okay, so take a minute. I, I'm going to pause for just a second and go get some more water. Um, so manually compute the Y values that go with T.3 and T.4. So you're using H as point 0.1 again. All right, so I'll pause for just a second and I'll be right back.
Okay, so how are we doing, gentlemen? Is this uh, kind of making sense? Hopefully. Yes, no. Looks like we lost a couple of you guys from Discord anyway. Okay, you guys still with me? Hello. All right. So, what did you guys get for your uh, the next two points? Um, so basically, we can have Mathematica compute it by just uh, doing this and this, and then changing this to three, four, three, four. Three, four, and three, four. All right. So let's see if this, uh, if we get the things that uh, you guys got. Okay. So uh, our two new t coordinates, as we said, were 0.3 and 0.4, and the t coordinates go up by the same amount each time, right? In this case, our step size is 0.1. Uh, do these two numbers look? Uh, did you guys get something pretty close to that? Maybe subject to a little bit of rounding. Hopefully. Yeah, close. That's what you got? Okay, good. Um, all right, so yeah, this is a bunch of number crunching, obviously, but uh, c'est la vie. Uh, okay, now if we look at our graph, um, our data object now has five things in it, and so it goes over to um, um, why do we not have Oh, yeah, no, that's right. Okay, so um, our uh, data object now has two new points in it, so a total of five. And if we do our list line plot, or basically just our line plot of those points, then we can see we are hugging the green curve, but just barely it's starting to get slightly off from the green curve. It's almost, it's hard to notice. Okay. Now, you guys have probably guessed, do we want to do this and have to keep typing all of this stuff over and over and over again? Probably not the way we want to go about it, okay? So, uh, what we want to do is automate the procedure of, of making a new, the next entry and appending it to the list, okay? And so to do that, let me uh, switch back over to the documentation. And uh, sorry for inception there. Um, let's switch back over to the Mathematica documentation. Okay. And what we want to do is uh, use uh, a programming uh, command called a for loop. Okay. So we want to just repeat a procedure over and over again a set number of times. And here's the basic sort of uh, way that this looks. We need to have a counter that starts at some value. In our case, it will start at 1. Um, and we want to uh, stop when our counter gets less than, or gets to be some particular value. This is basically just how many times we want to do the loop. And then this thing here tells us what do we do to go from our, how do we update our counter. Plus plus is just a shorthand for adding one each time. And then the fourth object is what we want to do. 
okay? So in our case, the fourth thing, the thing that we want to do each time is this append to command. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is let me make some space. I'm gonna leave those there for now in order to uh, be kind of our, our template for what the command needs to look like. So we need to do four i equals one i less than, well, that's up to us. How many times do we want to do this? Well, I'm going to do 200, okay? And then I plus plus, and then what is it that we do each time? We're going to append to data, okay? What are we going to append to data? Well, it's going to be an object that looks like this. Okay. But this time, our, uh, instead of the one right there, I'm going to put an I. Okay. So what that's going to do uh, and then I'm going to put a semicolon here because otherwise we'll get bombarded. What that's going to do is progressively add in our new points. So this, these pair of commands would be equivalent to having 200 of these commands explicitly written one after the other. Okay, I don't want to actually have to write all of that crap. So I'm going to let the computer do it. Okay. So let me, for the sake of just demonstration here, let me do six. And what we should get is exactly the same five points that we had before. Um, so let's see if we do. And, yep, there we go. We've got the same five ones we did before, plus one new one. Um, and um, so if I did that then this would be the exact five we had before. Okay, so now if I want to just do this for a bunch of new ones, I can just do that, and there's all 200 whatever. Okay, I don't really care what they all are, but I do care what the plot looks like, and there it is uh, in the red. Now, because my step size is so small, the red stick line, right, really it's just a bunch of little line segments that have been tacked together, it sure looks like a curve. Um, and that's just because the sticks are so short that you're in the graph, you don't notice that they don't look, um, oop, let me move up a little bit here, uh, you don't even notice that they're not uh, curvy, that they're straight lines. The other thing I want you to notice here is that look at the red stick curve versus the green exact solution curve. They're pretty dang close, right? So that's pretty good. It's not perfect, but it's pretty good. Um, so, just sort of to recap here, uh, Euler's method is what we're using here. It is one of a bajillion different techniques for doing numerical solutions to differential equations, okay? Um, and basically, all it is is a bunch of number crunching of following writing the arrows, okay? So this is why last time I think I made the, the reference to the Forrest Gump movie, right, where the feather is sort of floating through the air. You're just following the arrows. And the, um, the smaller your step size, the more accurate of an approximation you're going to get up to a point. Um, sometimes weird things can happen, um, and basically the limitation is uh, how precise machine arithmetic is. Um, that's sort of a, a, another, you know, kind of issue. Um, but if you choose a reasonably small step size, then you can get solutions to these things that look reasonable. Okay, uh, so the good news is this little chunk of code right here is recyclable. 
okay? The only things that we would have to change would be um, what this function is, what our step size is, and what our initial point is. But this chunk of it, um, well, other than maybe the 200, can basically get just recycled wholesale. And so if, I, if we had a different differential equation with a different point, maybe a different step size, etc., we can recycle this stuff uh, and use it again. Um, okay, so uh, what we'll do next time is we're going to start to change the differential equation to something different. Okay, and we'll talk about uh, why we're going to change the differential equation to something different and what, what we'll kind of be after in terms of some mathematical modeling. Uh, but then also, I want to show you guys basically how to do this um, in Microsoft Excel. Uh, or in our case, actually, we'll do it on Google Sheets um, because that way... Um, that way you guys can uh, uh, do it online and we can sort of all share the same document. Okay, so um, two things uh, I'd like you guys to do if possible um, is it, if uh, um, get Mathematica installed and I'll uh, post a link to Canvas for where the instructions are for how to do that. Um, and then also if you haven't used Google Sheets or Google Docs before, um, just kind of play around with them briefly um, so that we're, we're ready to go with that on Monday. All right, any questions, preguntas, fragen? Are we good? Um, all right, well, I'll go ahead and end the stream here. Uh, if you guys have questions, uh, hit me up in Discord, and I will see you guys. Uh, oops, I will see you guys on Monday, if not sooner. Have a good weekend.